so further with this ring. We have to take what we have been given us. This is not Lord of the Rings. Ring of Desire. Ring of Desire. Yeah, I was in that one. Great. Well, I haven't seen it yet, but I hear good things. I hear good things. Hi, I'm Danny Tesler, and I played Tony Temple in Ring of Desire. <laughs> and uh, I come across a ring uh, that when you put it on, you have sexual desire. So, um, <laughs> I know what you're thinking, but uh, it's uh, not that kind of movie. Um, Ronnie uh, made it very clear to us that uh, this was going to be done with class and taste, and uh, it was still going to be erotic, but not um, vulgar. So, uh, I was to have my first nude scene <laughs> In a movie, I um, well, I wasn't completely nude. I was wearing a sock, so that was an interesting day shooting. So we shot this film in 2020, the beginning of 2020, before the pandemic hit. Um, it was in Kingman, Arizona. Most of the cast was from uh, Las Vegas uh, and crew. Um, so I got to spend some time driving with some of the cast uh, and getting to know characters that were going to play my wife and my sister in the film. Uh, the story is basically. Uh, I'm in a uh, marriage that's uh, falling apart. Um, you learn throughout the film why things have been the way they've been, but the great thing about this film is you never really can figure out where it's heading or what's going to happen. It keeps you interested uh, from the beginning all the way through to the end. Uh, and like a lot of films, you already sort of can be three steps ahead, but this film, you just don't know what is going to happen, which uh, can keep it very interesting. So if you like, uh, romantic, dramatic, um, supernatural kind of movies, then uh, you'll enjoy this one. Uh, one of the things I think that was great that Ronnie did was put together a great team. So uh, we had an incredible uh, cast and, and crew and we're all there for uh, the right reasons. We wanted to make the best film we could. Uh, we knew we had very little time, so we'd start sometimes at 8 or 9 in the morning and finish it up at about uh, 2 o'clock in the morning at some nights. So it was, uh, it was busy. So we all really supported one another to uh, make sure we completed this film and, and, and have it be the best film we could possibly make it. And, and uh, um, I'd say one of my favorite things that have come out of making this film was the friends that I've made. Now smash that like button and hit subscribe. I uh, can't wait to see the whole movie put together. Hi, I'm Adrienne McLean and I play Holly in the film Ring of Desire. Uh, this film was such an amazing experience to be a part of. First off, we did it in February of 2020, so this was right before everything hit with the pandemic. So it was, as of right now, my last opportunity to really interact with other actors and not have that sense of worry um, of possibly, you know, will I get sick or do I have to be tested or things like that. So. That in itself is just something that I will always treasure and, you know, hopefully we will get back to that one day. But as of right now, it was definitely something that was eye-opening and crazy to look back on. The film itself is this beautiful piece of work where our director, Ronnie, you know, wanted to kind of stretch the lines a little bit in, in the way we see things and so I think it's going to be fun uh, to watch it from that perspective as well. Um, for myself, Holly is the main antagonist and I had never played an antagonist before but it was so much fun <laughs> and I felt that I had tapped into something that was always there um, and you know admiring actresses like Meryl Streep and seeing her in Devil Wears Prada and seeing that, you know, sometimes there's always a different side to the antagonist. So it was nice to kind of play with those themes as well and kind of understand better, you know, how to bring life and um, just groundedness to the character. So I'm excited to see it. I hope that you guys are excited to see it. And 
See you on the big screen. Hi there. My name is Ben Stover, and I worked on the film Ring of Desire as the first AD to director Ronnie Nanos. I also was the casting director on the film and contributed a song to the end credits for the film. Uh, for me, the, the biggest, most exciting part on working with Ring of Desire was working with my best friend of well over six years. <laughs> Ronnie's come from a, a large theater background, uh, burlesque. And this was his first directorial debut, working in a feature film. I think that the most exciting part was being able to, to introduce him into the world of film, working in it, and now for him to be able to direct a film from executive producer Neelish Patel. I wanted to be there to, to support him, to, to be able to, to be there to help him tell the story. Uh, it was the first film for me, from a non-acting perspective, that I got to work fully as a crew. And that certainly brought up a lot of, I would say, uh, unique challenges, obstacles. Um, namely, I would say, like with the, the story, um, having a very strong sexual feel to it uh, was something interesting in talking with the director, with Ronnie, and getting his interpretation on how he wanted to, to tell the story. The, the, the most important factor was finding the theme that tied it all together, addiction, which is something very relatable for many people. And I think that was the heart of this film and for him to be able to create a sexy, sensual film without being pornographic. Uh, but from that burlesque experience, I found it amazing how he was able to create a film where you think you're seeing nudity, you think you're seeing something, but you're not. I found that uh, incredibly intriguing having read the script and was uh, a, little, uh, a little shocked and a little scared, <laughs> but it was just incredible working with a very tight-knit group as this was the spring of 2020 before the pandemic COVID hit and being able to work tightly together with this incredible crew and cast of actors, everybody wearing multiple hats and learning and growing from this experience um, really was the most amazing, incredible part of shooting Ring of Desire. And that was up in Kingman, Arizona. So we got to see some incredible, amazing wildlife too. It was a great break uh, getting away from Las Vegas as well. And I'm really excited for people to see this this love story, uh, the, the themes and ties of love and the, the supernatural elements and powers and the temptations of what addiction can do to, um, to tear that genuine, real meaning and feeling of love apart. So I'm really excited for you guys to check out this amazing movie as we're in post-production and can't wait. Thank you. Carter and I wanted to talk to you about my experience in filming Ring of Desire. It is the directorial debut of Ronnie Lloyd Nanos and I could not be more excited to have been a part of this project with him. I've known Ronnie for a few years now. We've met in the blessed community here in Las Vegas and I will say being able to know him in that aspect has been a blessing in and of itself. We both have a strong dancer background so I know that anytime we share a stage together I'm able to go to him and get raw and honest critiques that are never meant to discourage you, but are meant to encourage you to do better and be a better performer with your craft. And any performer know that type of critique is priceless. So talking to Ronnie about his film projects and the things he's been involved in, it's been truly exciting when he got the word that he was gonna be directing, going from being in front of the camera to being behind and calling the shots and bringing the vision to life. When we initially started talking about the film, and the themes and feels behind it, he let me know that he really wanted to reach out to the burlesque community. The burlesque community is known for not only accepting, but celebrating different ethnicities, body types, and sexualities. And he knew that in reaching out to the burlesque community, not only would he get fresh new faces who may or may not have a theater background, but who would be able to be comfortable with themselves and exude that sensuality that was such a necessary part in this film and not only exude it, but make it and not make it so implicit. As a blessed performer, our jobs would be masters of the art of tease. And in this film, it's crucial in having that. You never have anything so explicitly sexual and raw, 
but it's very sensual and implied to where you think something may have happened, but maybe if you blink twice, it really didn't. The film itself starts off with the quintessential battle of good versus evil. You have the good sorceress Belinda coming to, I guess, rush in and save the day. And then you have the evil sorceress, hello, Susanna, who's been consumed with power and that power has become addiction. And Susanna becomes the first person who's overtaken by this power and trapped in the ring. So you can already see right off the bat how dangerous it can be. As the film continues, you're able to see different couples and how it plays into their lives and their relationships. One of the themes that you deal with in this movie is addiction. I myself as someone who's had to battle addiction and getting clean. And in this film, the question is, can love really be something that can help you overcome addiction or do you need something more? In some cases, you're able to see that, yeah, love really does conquer all. And if you have love in your life, you'll be fine. And then in some cases, you can see that even love can not conquer all addictions. And sometimes you just get consumed and it's your downfall, that greediness and that urge to always want to have all the power. I think in Ronnie's choice in reaching out to new faces and in the burlesque community and amongst his friends as well, is that you're able to get this raw sensuality. Nothing is explicitly sexual and nothing's just in your face, raw dog gangbanging, but everything is just a touch here, a peek there, a glimpse here and there to where it's more sensual and even a little romantic. You get this married couple who's trying to fix the relationship and then you're able to see with them that deep down they truly love each other and that was enough to conquer this and then you have another couple to where maybe there's love maybe there's not and then you have one to where you can see how without love you just lost and that can be a heartbreaking thing as well i like the fact that looking back now it seems kind of surreal that we even did the film with everything going on to know that before all this went down, I was able to go out somewhere with not only my friends, Ronnie, Bridget, Sean, and the oh so amazing Tana, but being able to meet new people and be a part of a project that probably this day and age we need more than ever. We need to see more representation of different walks of life on the big screen. And this will definitely be on the big screen. So yeah, it's been a true pleasure to be a part of this film, being able to exude some sensuality with not being overtly sexual, but also being able to tell a story. Hello, this is Nilesh Patel here, the producer and executive producer of The Ring of Desire. Making Ring of Desire, it was my dream since 2017. And I read the script uh, from the Rolf. And the way he wrote, I did not want to make that way because originally script has a lots of nudity inside. And I was planning to do without the nudity. So I talked to a couple people to make the Ring of Desire, but they were not... Uh, capable to do that and finally when I was shooting my Mr. Daisy and Ronnie was assisting me as an assistant director and I seen his dedication to the work, his dedication to work with uh, all the cast and crew and how to work with uh, other field as well. That time I thought like I will talk to the Ronnie regarding for the Ring of Desire after I finish this shoot. And finally time came and I sent the script to the Ronnie and he read the script and he said, script is good. So I talked to Ronnie, we met a couple people and finally I told him how I want to make this film without any nudity. And he said, okay, I will rewrite the script and we can do something like burlesque style because the Ronnie's background is a burlesque performer. And he's a stage artist and stage choreographer, so he knows very well. 
how to play with the script and he rewrite the script and i read that it was really good script right and finally me and ronnie went to the see the location in a walapai mountain in kingman arizona we locked the location in a last year in a, around september and october in 2019 and we planned to start the shoot during the 2020 2020 in a february and we were lucky to finish up the shooting because the we, once we finished the shoot for the ring of desire and the pandemic was start so it was really good for us we finished the film and during the pandemic every everybody was locked down and during that time we work on a post production and right now our film is ready is that we are releasing our first trailer on a, this coming monday on a 14th of september 2020 and we are really excited for the first trailer i seen the trailer trailer is really good and everybody works very hard our cast also they were excellent most of the cast they have a first time experience in the front of the camera but they are from the stage they know how to act because they are burlesque dancer in las vegas so hopefully everything is good and the film is made really nice and i'm really excited to make the red carpet and premiere in uh, around november or december hopefully everything goes smooth so that's it and i would like to thanks my entire team cast and crew especially thanks to roni ben and crystal thank you very much bye bye My name is Crystal Zimmerman and I was the second AD as well as script supervisor on the film Ring of Desire. Now when Ronnie Nanos asked me to be a part of this, I was thrilled. I've never worked in film before, uh, although he and I have worked together on stage and in burlesque endeavors for the last nearly 15 years. Um, so I was really excited that he trusted me to come in and try something new. Uh, everybody with Patel films was just absolutely fantastic and so welcoming. Um, I never felt dumb for asking a question. So that was really fantastic that they were so embracing of newcomers, uh, which was very fortunate because we had a lot of newcomers in the film as well. Um, we had some burlesque dancers that came in and performed uh, uh, in the film. Uh, and that was just fantastic. It's fantastic to see an art form that you really embrace be portrayed up um, on the screen, so uh, that was a lot of fun. Um, this film was actually completed just right before the pandemic hit America. So as we were starting to film, we were kind of hearing all these things about um, where COVID-19 was hitting in other parts of the world and how they were all shutting down and closing down things and not able to uh, continue life as usual. And we didn't really think much of it. We just had a film to get done. Uh, but shortly after we got done shooting this film, everything in America hit too, and we started closing down. So it's it's really interesting that um, we were able to get all of that done just in the nick of time. Um, and otherwise, we would have had to wait for who knows how long. Um, the greatest thing about this film is that it is technically an erotic thriller, um, but there is nothing gratuitous about any of the sex or uh, intimate scenes in this film because again Ronnie and I both have come from that burlesque background and we understand the need to be sensual without being overtly sexual so that was a really nice thing to watch and see how we could adapt and make things be sexy without being too much out there uh, but we managed to pull it off and it just it's looking beautiful and I can't wait to see the whole thing. Um, one thing that uh, is a recurring theme throughout this is the desire for power and the desire for people to be able to control other people. But really the thing that you, you should come away taking from this is that uh, you are the one that has the power. It is entirely up to you 
how you perceive these things. If you're going to take it on in a negative fashion, then nothing's going to go right. But if you try to take it on in the most positive way possible, you're going to be able to get through anything. And that is definitely a recurring theme that you'll see throughout this film. And I really just could not be prouder to have been a part of this. Hi everyone, my name is Sean Craig Stewart and I had the pleasure of playing Jake in The Ring of Desire. Um, it was really exciting because this is my first movie I ever got to act in. I grew up in doing theater and I did extra work when I lived in LA but this was my first time actually having a speaking role on camera. So it was really excited for me um, and it's kind of a great first role. I get to flirt and make out with a girl <laughs> which was four hours. <laughs> We made out for like two hours straight. It was hilarious. Um, but the the movie was really cool to me because I've always been a horror and thriller fan. And um, Ronnie and I had worked in the past doing burlesque together. And I saw that he was directing his first film. And we chatted about it and I decided to come out and audition, which a few of my other burlesque friends did as well. And it was really cool to see how many of us got cast um, because our, I guess, freedom of sensuality and sexuality and knowing how to push limits fit so well with this movie. Um, I mean, just getting to watch Neon and what she did is my first time seeing her out of the burlesque world and just I was blown away and I knew a lot, a few of the people within the cast and it was just really cool to see them in a different um, environment and to see their strengths and to see Ronnie in a different capacity and I really enjoyed working with him and I think he was able to bring that, um, that, that fine line between sensuality and sexuality and what's too far and what's far enough and um, what's necessary. Um, there was some changes made because certain things weren't necessary and we actually achieved more by alluding to what was happening. Um, and it was also really exciting for me working with Felissa Rose because, I mean, being a horror fan, watched her uh, a lot. Um, so it was kind of a little fangirl moment, trying to keep it in. Um, the entire cast, the entire crew was all amazing. And it's really fun because I had actually booked a job in another state. And I was actually leaving the week after the filming. So when I got asked to be in it, they told me the dates and it was just perfect that I was able to actually be in the movie. Um, I can't wait to see the full production come together. Like I said, since this is my first time being an actor in it and being so close with uh, the director and the crew and stuff, I've been able to hear the little snippets of now we're editing, now we're adding music in, and all those different elements that you don't realize go into a movie when you're just watching it because everyone just gets to see the final product and it's literally movie magic. Um, yeah, so I guess that's it. Thanks. Bye. Hi there. My name is Ronnie Nanos and I am the director of Ring of Desire. First, I'd like to thank you for watching our film, and I hope you had just as much fun watching it as we had making it for you. Directing a film, it's always been a dream of mine. I come from a background in theater as a director, choreographer, and has been a performer as a classical ballet dancer, and now as also a burlesque performer. Like, I've always sought to tell character-driven stories where characters are, they have actions that are followed by consequences. You know, classic moral tales that can be plausible in cinema, for all walks of life, 
as well as representing diversity of those same communities, such as the LGBTQIA community, having different ethnic backgrounds, you know, so that people of color were represented and different body types as well, while still emphasizing performance as the top priority. So we wanted to tell these tales and tell you a great story. Making Ring of Desire, it gave me these opportunities. My vision was to tell a romantic fantasy thriller artistically. But using my background in dance and theater, we wanted to create a world where we weren't afraid to tackle sensuality and sexuality, but we were gonna do it in a way not usually seen on screen. We were more about making the audience experience much more than they actually are seeing by suggestion in tease in those scenes without sacrificing the intent. I took my inspirations from movies like, like Ghost, which has supernatural elements, but tells a love story. And even from Shakespeare, The Witches in the Beginning of Macbeth, as well as movies like um, Basic Instinct with the raw, hardcore sexuality, but again, making it as artistic as possible. Ring of Desire was an experience that I would like to thank the team that we put together. First of all, I think there's nothing that can be done unless you have great teamwork. And um, that starts off with our producers, you know, with Patel Films, which is Neelish Patel and his wife, Chaitali. This is the second film by Patel Films, and it was far different from the first film, and which I was involved with as well. And they gave me this directorial debut, and I'm so honored that they took that chance with me and let me build, you know, our crew and hire the actors and, and hire people that I knew would come through, even if they had experience in theater or not so much in film that I knew they, they would get done what I wanted to get done. And I could not be any more thankful than I am for all those that worked on this. It made this experience pre-production, during production, even in post-production, fantastic. We filmed Ringing of Desire in February of 2019, which many know is, or not 2019, 2020, pardon me, 2020, which is right before the pandemic hit the United States of America. And um, it's an experience to be doing the post-production during COVID times as I've worked with our um, editor and our composer from afar in my home in Texas. And they're based in um, Las Vegas in the LA areas, but Again, it's been a great team. I would like to just conclude this by saying thank you again for watching. Um, it is a tale that is about addiction, about power, about love, about good versus evil. And I hope all those things come out. And I hope if anything you have, you were entertained by it and maybe took a little bit home something that was a little personal. So again, thank you and I'll see you at the movies. This is my second feature. I've worked with Patel Films. The first film, Mr. Dishi, I played Amanda, Subway Girl, and I just had the best time on set with Neil and Ronnie, and I was very happy to accept the role of Wendy in Ring of Desire. Um, I love about playing Wendy is, for the small amount of time she's in the film, she, she's very complex and she just wants what all people want to feel love, acceptance, to feel valued. And I haven't seen the film yet, but I really hope that shines through. It's a long road, but yeah. I couldn't, you know, I, I couldn't have asked for more in the dedication. And just really, I'm just more. Thank you. I mean, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> this is my first time directing. You need it. You need it. My first time directing a full film. Yeah. Just thank you all so much. I mean, I really. Yay. Yay. Thank you. Yay. We're trying to make it. So, for how I actually do feel. Thank you all so, so much.
I'm exhausted. In the <laughs> words of Dion, yeah, take that, a breath great. and take a nap. Take a breath and take a nap. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna sleep up that bitch. Right. And then one day I'm gonna stone all that. And oh my goodness. Yeah, thank y'all. That's a wrap. Yeah! yeah.